I'm going to show you a couple of new features of the Flash Builder 4 that's just been released and I really like these. There's some new features, that, especially in the coding department here that you know, you've had in a lot of other languages and a lot of other IDEs for a while so it's kind of nice to get them finally in, in Flash Builder. Um, got to get used to calling it Flash Builder instead of Flex Builder now. So what I've got here is I've set up a, a little demonstration file to show what's going on. I have a little MXML file, it's just got a button and a text label here and I'll just go back to the source and the button calls a function called set name which as you can see here basically goes in and I have a class that I've set up, I'll show you in a second and all the function does when you click the button is it grabs two variables uh, my first name and my family name and concatenates them into a string which will then change on the label so looking at the class, what we have is I set up a, an instance of it here called get set sample, and I'll just go over there and show you all the class has is basically just two public variables, my first name of type string and my family name of type string. Now this is a really bad way to do this, and it's a bad coding practice to essentially access the variables directly within the class but I've just done it this way because I, you know I know some people out there do it even though you shouldn't and how you can quickly and easily correct this problem especially in the new Flash Builder 4 so we'll just go back to the main XML here and what we have is so the application gets created we call the init function in creation complete and I just set those two variables directly uh, the instance name of the class is me, so it's me dot my first name equals Peter, and me dot my family name equals Widom. And so what we're going to do is we're just going to go ahead and run the application here. And when I click the display name, you can see we get that concatenated string there in the label. So let's just go ahead and close this. Now let's look at really the the correct way to do this to follow proper coding standards and just good practices. So let's go back to get set sample here and before I show you the way to correct this problem I'm going to show you a, a nice little thing in the refactoring here in Flash Builder 4. What I'm going to do is double click the my family name I'm going to right click and I'm going to go down to refactoring here and rename. And what I can do now is I'm actually going to rename that variable there I'm actually going to call it you know my surname and we're going to tell it to update references and we're going to hit preview and what's going to happen here is going to go through the whole application and it's actually going to look I'm just going to move this window and make it a little bigger here it's actually going to try and find in the application in all the files within the application references to this my family name variable and what it's showing me here in these two windows is it's saying you know if I select the file here get set sample.as which is the class file you'll see that it's showing me that my family name is going to be changed to my surname and if I go down to the main XML file and click on it you'll see there's a few changes here it's going to firstly it's seen that in that init function where I set the variable to Witam, it says my family name it's going to rename that to my surname and then in the function set name which is you called by the button when you click on it it's going to do the same thing again. It's found it there, my family name, and it's going to change it to my surname. So I'm just going to go OK. And what I'll do is I'll just run that application again just to prove that everything got renamed correctly without any effort on our part. We didn't have to go back and remember where we'd access this variable and made the changes. The refactoring has done it for us, which is great for some, you know, when you've got a lot of code and a lot of complex applications, it's just really nice to have that in there. So I'll click display name and you can see it does exactly the same thing. Everything works as expected. Now let's let's address this problem of, of bad practices here. So I'm sure this is something familiar to a lot of you out there and if it's not, um, you'll have probably heard it before in the development community called getters and setters. And that's really the way that you should access these variables in this class file, in this instance of the class file. And what they do is basically a getter and a setter uh, as you can imagine from the names, the, calling the getter function allows you to, to, to return the value of this variable and the setter allows you to set it. Well, you know, normally before we'd have to go in and set them all by hand and I'll just show you an example there. You know, you'd create something like a public function um, set first name 
and you know you'd probably have an incoming string name there so we'll call it name of type string and it's not going to return anything because we're actually using this as the setter and then what you do is you do something like you know this dot my first name equals the parameter underscore name so you know you can do that by hand and that's the way we've always done it but there's a quicker and a better way now we have this in flash builder 4 that allows us to set these you know automatically so what I'm gonna do is I've got gonna click on my first name I'm gonna right click I'm gonna go down to source and you'll see that we have this generate getter and setter that we can click on and what happens here the first thing it's gonna do is it's gonna correctly make this variable private so we cannot access it from outside the class and it, if we want we you know we're gonna rename it here to underscore my first name that's fine and then down here in the getter setter we can actually set a name well for the sake of convenience here you know since I'm already in the main XML MXML file calling it by clicking you know me dot my first name I'm just gonna leave this the same so that I don't have to change that code it's gonna generate a getter and a setter namespace is gonna be public and we can either have it insert before the first method or we can have it after the last method or after the variable declaration well I'm gonna go after the last method and I'm just gonna click OK and so you can see that it's generated two functions here for us we have the getter which is get my first name and it's gonna return the value of underscore my first name which is now a private variable and we have the setter my first name with a value and what that's going to do is we, if we send in the value underscore my first name will now become the value that we send in as the parameter and because I've kept the same name here my first name if we go back and look at the main MXML I don't have to change this because me dot my first name and me dot my surname are just fine because that's the names that we've got here so I don't have to change anything so what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on my surname and I'm going to do the same thing again. I'm just going to go source, generate, get and setter. I'm going to leave all of these the same. Just go OK. I'm going to save that file. And now I'm going to debug the application again. And now when I click display name, it does exactly as it should before. We're following better coding practices. And, you know, it's just a nice clean code that we can go back and see in the future. Um, if we reference those variables somewhere else in the application, things aren't going to get screwed up because now we access them via the getters and the setters. So I'll just close that. So that's just a, a quick rundown there on two of the new really nice features, especially the getter setter feature, um, you know, in Flash Builder 4, and we'll cover some more in the future.